do you allow your designs to be influenced by other people well i kind of allowed that to happen with this little vanity as you could see it was a pretty vanity i started to make it just that a vanity they do well in my area and i've never had any problems selling them so i started to just basically uh take the drawers back to bare wood because i was going to stain them and then paint the piece and that was going to be it but then i let a little certain someone on instagram a friend of mine i'm not going to name her but you know who you are talk me into Tell me that this piece needed to be two nightstands. At this point, I'm still using QCS to remove all of the stain from this. I honestly was giving QCS a second chance and I'm still not sure that I'm using it or either on the right piece or on the right finish for it to work the way that it needs to work. It works to a certain extent, but not as the stripper that I see everyone using it like. So I don't dislike it, but it's not for me at this point. Anyways, I allowed her to talk me into this. So then I had to talk my husband into it. And he was quite, um, let's just say, disturbed <laughs> by the fact that I wanted to cut this piece completely. At first he was telling me that we should just take the trim off and then I was like no we need to really just cut it into two he's still trying to talk me out of it but you know I'm the boss sort of and um, although he uses all of the power tools and I need to rely on him to do that I still convinced him to do it so we took it apart I drew the line where I needed him to cut it and he did exactly that. I thought I was recording, but instead I think I just took a picture. So anyway, picture him cutting that with the saw. I then took these uh, little guys to the shop and finished them out over there. Right now I am uh, sanding all of that wood on the top, making sure that the tops are completely bare taking all of that finish off and then I'm going to start uh, making all of the repairs that they needed that is the one thing that I'm going to tell you guys on this after taking the pieces apart there will be holes that you don't know or you know didn't think it were they were that deep um, and repairs that you're going to have to make and there is going to be a lot of bondo use I also um, made sure that my husband grouted the edges of, on the tops because of course they need to look the same. So he did that for me. And I do know how to use the router, but I chose not to. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Bondo. And there was a lot of Bondo that needed to be used. I went ahead and used the Woodfield type. There is also one that is gray and when you know that you're going to paint the piece then it's fine to use the gray one but either way bondo is a two-part epoxy it dries extremely hard and is the best thing that i know most of the uh, furniture refinishers use because we can trust it that it will be a hard finish so i'm i use a, I, I mix it in small batches so that it doesn't dry out while i'm applying it and making sure that some of the edges are straighter and you know things like that so i recommend that you do that um, and then just mix as you need and make those repairs allowing it a good 30 minutes to an hour is the ideal time for it to completely dry especially if you're using big quantities so that is what i did in this case I then took my Festool sander and on its max speed, which is number six on this one, I went ahead and sanded all of that bondo back and made sure that all of the edges were straight if additional plastic wood needed to be put on anything so that everything was smooth. I did that and then I sculpt sanded the entire piece and also dusted everything and cleaned it 
really, really well. Cleaning the pieces is one of the things that I really enjoy doing and I know that that's weird. A lot of people have told me in the comments that I'm a weird person because I like to clean him, but I do. I enjoy that part of it. Those little bunt feet are so cute and this is how they look after they're completely finished. Or not finished, completely cleaned and we're going to move on to the finishing now. I'm gonna start by using clear bonding primer from Country Chic. I'm gonna use all Country Chic products on this redesign. And I applied that clear bonding primer all over the pieces, including the drawers. So these are the drawers right here and as you guys can see i'm having a hard time getting them to an even tone um i actually off camera went in the head went ahead and put some bleach on this and the bleach took better on some than on others and better on some parts of them than not um they are different wood than the bases are for sure I thought it was all the same wood, but it's not. And even when they were building, I think they built them out of two different woods as well. Um, or two different trees, or I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what, but these are different. So I may end up painting the entire thing rather than doing some stain or a different color. I may still try to do a little bit of a full finish on these bunt legs because they're so pretty and I want them to look different, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to achieve any of that. In the meantime, I'm just gonna allow this to dry and then bring on the paint. I'm always working on more than one project at the shop so I am doing some painting on these drawers while the primer dries on the two little nightstands. This is a wash and I wish that you guys could see this better but it's really just a wash of two paint colors, um, dark roast and leather bound by Country Chic Paint. And I integrated right there on this corner over here, right here. You can almost see what the leather bound looked like and then dark roast is exactly what it says. It's a really dark brown. And so combined, they made this color right here. And I really like it. So I'm going to apply it as a wash, kind of like stain wash. I think that's the best view that I can give you right now. I'm having the hardest time with my ring camera, my ring light rather. Um, not exactly sure why, but I did not send back the entire the, the, this piece is completely because again i wanted them to have that wood look underneath but they were sounded completely smooth and all of the pieces that were literally kind of failing um were sanded smooth so This paint wash is going to be exactly what I wanted to do with these legs, but I will show you a different trick or an additional trick that I did to them. I went ahead also and gave this piece the first coat. And um, one thing about Country Chic is that the paint is thick and one coat is almost two coats 
for other paints so i love that about it i also went ahead and painted the backs of these and that's not something that i do on every piece but for these they're they're gonna be small or they're gonna end up being small and i wanted them to just be completely finished on every side i did not paint over that stamp that is there because it it will show the age of the piece and that is made out of solid wood and all of that good stuff but one coat on that and we're gonna be doing good so back to these drawers that are giving me such a hard time and i'm not going to let them win the battle so i decided to go ahead and take the same paint wash and basically give them a coat and see how this is going to look how that wood that is uneven at the bottom is going to look if it's going to take it evenly all of that stuff so after just a light coat i went ahead and allowed it to sort of dry for a couple of seconds really I just probably waited like a good maybe 15 to 20 seconds and then with a dry rag I pulled back on it here I'm about to do that and what you will see is that it pulled back too much of that paint wash so I didn't like that color and I went ahead and added some more of that paint wash on top of this and that definitely did the trick look at that beautiful wood tone that i'm achieving i am really really loving it it's incredible how by just by mixing two different colors of paint you can achieve a stain look as well i then apply them all to the drawers some of the drawers took two coats of it to get the same coloring or the same uh, tone and the two little drawers actually took three coats of that it's crazy but yeah like i said all of the wood on these was completely different I also applied it to the tops and the tops looked perfect after just a coat and then some additional maybe half coats in some spaces which again is kind of crazy but it is what it is Okay, so now let's talk about these little bunt legs. They're super cute. And as you can see, I did two coats of the paint wash on them. Uh, on one, I had to do three to make them even. They look too much like paint and that is not exactly what I wanted to do on these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wet rag and basically take back some of that paint wash and uncover some of the finish because that's what i want to achieve that color that it looks there um, on these i've already done it on one leg as you can see and the other one needs it needs it done so i'm going to show you here exactly what i did just took a rag and started pulling some of that paint wash back which is going to then reveal the stain that i left intentionally behind so that in case i needed to do this i could do it and it would look just like that see the difference that's what I want so now I'm gonna do it on all four legs so that it looks kind of like that when it's all dry when I returned the next day those legs just did not convince me so I decided to do another wash on them this time with a very light paint something like a putty color to see how exactly this was going to paint out and what i decided was that i was going to do a mixture of the two colors and make them look more of a solid and then go back and add some what i call perhaps some faux wood but that also didn't look right let me show you what i came up with You see that 
now they were too light so then i went ahead and did an extra wash with another color and mixed in the chocolate and the leather bound and came up with something that was a little bit closer not exactly what i needed to have done which at this point i was more and more convinced that i probably just needed to go ahead and strip that but in order for me to get this video out timely for my deadline that i imposed on myself anyways i went ahead and just literally faux wood or faux the entire thing so i created a wash that had a lot of yellow in it so that it looked or resembled what the raw wood would look like and then i went ahead and applied the brown initial brown wash that i created let it dry i applied a second one and then went back and got some of the brown and kind of just went over all of that anyways easier seen that explained or at least i don't know this is how it worked in my head so <laughs> um let me just show you what what i did At the very least in my head and to my eyes they look better this way so i'm gonna allow this to dry and then come back and do some additional touch-ups i think it's gonna work out like i said i normally don't paint the backs but on these i'm going to go ahead and do it simply because they're such small pieces and they're gonna look so much better the backs however they were looking a little bit rough and this is something that i didn't touch before so this is pre-existing from when they used to be a vanity and i didn't like how rough they were so i went ahead and got some caulking and i touched up everything and then filled in all of the little holes that it had from previous i believe it was probably nails or maybe some screws that were had been put on there before I didn't need to put in any additional um, nails to hold those backs, but it was just looking rough. So I went ahead and did it on all four sides and it looks so much better. Attention to detail is a big thing for me because if I'm going to look at something myself, I tend to look at all of those things now. So I assume that my customer is going to be doing the same. These are going to my shop. so. I'm particular about what I put in there because I'm gonna ask a good price and I want to provide a good product. Before the second coat went on, I of course did a light sanding with a 320 
grid paper and applied two and a half coats all together for these little nightstands. And look y'all, don't they look great? Yes, the legs are not perfect, but they look great. And trust me, they in person, they look much better. I went ahead and, and did my top coat on the drawers and I am applying top coat again by Country Chic with a sponge which is so easy to apply this way and look how it just comes alive the faux paint looks absolutely delicious on these I also did some drawer liners which is probably my least favorite thing to do but I do it anyway just because you know completed project and also applied uh, some butter on them to make them smell good the glue on this paper is kind of I don't know flaky so I went ahead and I applied some Mod Podge on top of whatever you already had just to make sure that it adheres well and I caught my husband doing the hardware for the other pieces that I'm working on and I appreciate his patience because I do not have any and he played around with that things until they were straight and look great on there do you guys even remember what this little vanity used to look like? All I remember is the bun feet. This doesn't look the same at all anymore. Look how chic it looks. These nightstands were a lot more work than I expected. I'm going to be very honest. And I'm not sure when I will do them again. I probably will, but not anytime soon. Unless my husband just cuts everything for me and then I'll just, you know, do them here and there i do have like three more sets that i could do however let's talk about this wood stain that i created with paint how about the power of paint it looks great the bun feet still don't look quite the same i may go back and just put a stain on that to kind of just pull it all together but they look really good and i'm proud of what i did they actually in person look a lot closer to the drawers and the top than the camera actually captures trust me on that anyways i think the hardware really pulled everything together along with the paper because of the horizontal lines that are on there so that really pulls it in as, as, as well as the color of the paper in the uh, liners and I'm just really in love with that color stain that I created with paint. Again, two colors combine and boom, there it is. It's easy to work with pieces that are in really good condition as is, but to create something different from something that used to be is definitely challenging and rewarding both at the same time. I really enjoyed doing this video this week, you guys. I finally got this down and this piece is completed. Look at that. Tell me in comments what you think. Make sure that you hit the subscribe and that share and make sure that you leave me a comment and I will see you again next week. Thanks again, you guys. Bye.